In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to you all, both those present at St Simon's and those who are part of this Mass, at whatever time of day it might happen to be, uh, through our YouTube online Masses. As we come together, the um, Thursday after the Epiphany, and uh, a troubled day in our world, um, maybe things reasonably, thank the Lord, reasonably settled uh, here in Australia with some uh, encouraging news in terms of COVID figures and so on here in Victoria today. But uh, we're very well aware of the uh, unrest, uh, to say the least, in the uh, United States. And uh, along with that, the, uh, the COVID situation in Europe and in England. So it's a, uh, it's a messy world, a lot, lot to pray about. And for us here in Australia, irrespective of our uh, perhaps grizzles and groans from time to time that we might have about the things that we've had to manage, um, we're doing reasonably well, all things considered, and we've been very blessed. Let's just pause for a moment at the beginning of our Mass and we'll ask God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, through your Son, you raised up your eternal light for all nations. Grant that we, your people, may come to acknowledge the full splendour of our Redeemer. Bathe evermore in his radiance. May we reach everlasting glory. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. We are to love because God loved us first. Anyone who says, I love God and hates his brother is a liar, since a man who does not love the brother that he can see cannot love God whom he has never seen. So this is the commandment that he has given us, that anyone who loves God must also love his brother. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, give your judgment to the king to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. From oppression he will rescue their lives. To him their blood is dear. They shall pray for him without ceasing and bless him all the day. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. May his name be blessed forever and endure like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed in him. All nations bless his name. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring good news to the poor and freedom to prisoners. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in him, returned to Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. And he won the approval of all, and they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think it was in the, uh, the Gospel according to Michael Corleone in the uh, acclaimed Godfather movies that we first heard the, uh, the phrase, this is strictly business, nothing personal. And uh, those very um, brutal and yet in, enthralling uh, stories that, that phrase was, um, is one of the ones that really stood out and it's one of the ones that's sort of etched its way into commonplace uh, conversation. But it's an important distinction. What's business and what's personal? Business is meant to be uh, removed from personal feelings and emotions. So we can, in other words, we can have a discussion with someone and they see things from a different perspective from what we do and we express that hopefully politely but it doesn't remove our sense of if we value that person we continue to value respect care for even love that person despite the area of disagreement strictly business nothing personal the whole one of the areas of background in that gospel today is, it might not seem at first glance to anything to do with strictly business and nothing personal, but it's about something we, we don't talk about all that often. It's something called popularity. The reality is that from maybe our first day at kinder, in primary school, right through life, the approval of others or at the very least, the acceptance of others. And maybe something which can become very, very engaging um, and even addictive is a sense of being honoured and popular and the, the flavour of the month. You'd better still, the flavour of the year or whatever. But it changes. Even for Jesus, it changed. We've got a gospel today, one of the really important gospels in, in which he basically says, well, here I am. You've been waiting for the Messiah and I'm here fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah. And it goes over very well for a while. We see it in a perhaps a... Uh, this very shortened, abbreviated form in the difference between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Jesus' entry, triumphant entry into Jerusalem and just a few days later, crowds lining the streets as he is taken to his execution, not to protest, not to support him, but to jeer at him. 
And it's a reminder to us as we look at those, this auspicious beginning of Jesus' public life where he was flavour of the month, very popular. What was the, the last words that they say? They were, he won the approval of all. Well, guess what? That didn't last. That's the way life goes. The people who win the approval of all don't retain the approval of all because for any number of reasons, something they say, something they say, something they do, something they're thought to have done, or may not have done, or whatever, or just the changing climate of society, well, it becomes a different story. On a personal level, given that something that we all contend with from when we're quite small and first engage in any sort of social uh, area of interaction, as I say, from preschool and kinder and primary school and so on, the whole sense of popularity is something, it may not be spoken as directly as that, but it's there for us. We do at the least like acceptance. We like to think that we can wave to our neighbour over the road and get a friendly wave back. That's a good start to the day if we can do that. Doesn't mean that they're our best friends or we're their best friends, but there is that sense of acceptance. And as life goes on, we develop friendships, we develop a sense of engagement with others. Sometimes it goes for a long time, sometimes it goes for a lifetime. Sometimes it hits a rock where what's personal and what's business seem to clash. Ultimately, though, this the fact that Jesus himself had to negotiate all this, had to live with this, and ultimately, despite a very popular beginning, his unpopularity, at least with a powerful group, proved from a human perspective his undoing and paved the way to Calvary. That's a, a reminder to us that it doesn't matter who you are, you can hit these rough spots in terms of acceptance. So as we go down that track in any number of different circumstances, we can be sitting around a table and somebody says something with which we totally disagree. What do we say? Do we speak up? Do we get into an argument? Um, do we allow it to get into an argument? Do we retain our own cool, calm uh, at attitude? Or do we allow the, the, the whole temperature to escalate to boiling point, etc.? Any number of different circumstances come in our life and we might, might be in a work situation where the sense of popularity and acceptance has its place, has its, its importance, but in the long run, well, there's that whole business of being true to ourselves. Doesn't mean we go off looking for a fight on every street corner, but it does mean that there are some times when we'll need to say what we need to say, do what we need to do, not just in terms of ourselves, but our sense of within the context of our, of our faith, believing that this is what the Lord wants us to do and to be. Sorting that out along the way in terms of our decision making is as a uh, a very uh, hazardous, tricky, challenging thing to do. So as we look at this gospel today and recognize that Jesus himself had to decide, he didn't have to necessarily kick a goal every time he, he, he stood up, but he kicked quite a few along the way, which is what, what we honor and listen to in the, in the gospels. But there are some times when we just let things go because ultimately it's not going to achieve much or we might do damage in the, in the process. But in terms of it being about us and our acceptance and our popularity in a small group, even in the family, in a workplace situation, in social group, whatever, it's an area of challenge in terms of, well, what do we let go? What do we make a stand on? What is, and again, getting back where we were, what is business and what is personal in the way in which we 
assess other people. I won't say judge, but just assess other people in terms of who they are in our life and how we interact with them. Because, let's face it, there will be good people, wonderful people, who see life from a different perspective. And they're entitled to that. And the reality is we can still appreciate the goodness in one another. So popularity, we all subconsciously, or maybe consciously, are aware of it. Maybe we even look for it. Certainly we look for, most of us, some sort of acceptance in life. But even there, the, uh, and there, that's where the example of Jesus is, there will be particular points of demarcation, forks in the road, where decisions have to be made, which might not win us many friends, but which nonetheless may be the right decision. That's where we need in our, our assessment of others and in assessment of our own personal actions, we need to know what's business and what's personal. We stand for our prayers of intercession. Jesus, splendour of the Father, Son of the Virgin Mary, brighten this day by your presence among us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, wonderful counsellor, mighty God, put us on the path to holiness. Be our guide. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, all-powerful, obedient and humble, inspire all of us to pour out our lives in the service of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son, born of the Virgin, was a new creation, untainted by our sinful condition. Renew us in Christ and cleanse us from all trace of sin. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. From our memorial book, we pray today for the repose of the souls of Maria Rowe and Bartola Molika, whose anniversaries of death occur today. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let me ask you to see this, please, the sacrifice we offer you. We will be contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, receive our offering by which is brought about a glorious exchange. By offering what you have given, may we be given the grace to receive your very self. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, 
you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. When he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <coughs> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously <clears throat> grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin <clears throat> and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
and sought for each other a sign of friendship and peace in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion prayer in, uh, in words which are time-honoured really. I think this prayer has been around for several centuries and perhaps translated a little differently from time to time but essentially it unites our mind and our heart and our thoughts very much with the, the core of our belief in the presence of the Lord in the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life might be constantly sustained. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just might mention in the toing and froing of holiday time and change of year and, and so on, and mass times, uh, Christmas, public holidays, all the rest of it. Um, next Saturday there will be mass at o'clock and uh, and then from the Saturday onwards the mass will be at 9 15 so I know it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit confusing and takes a bit of keeping up with but next Saturday there will be mass at 10 and Saturday afterwards 9 15 and so from then on um, the uh, mass times will be Monday at 10 and Tuesday to Saturday, 9.15. I won't ask, are we clear? Because I'm sure that we are. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>